Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Mrs. Hallowell. Welcome to Sunday School. And if you are new or just visiting the Newtown Reformed Church, I want to give you a very special welcome and thank you for joining us this morning. So today's lesson is about life sometimes just isn't fair. And when life is unfair, we can always trust God that he loves us and he will care for us and he will work out his plans in the end. So before we get into the Sunday School program, let's just think about things that aren't fair. During today's times, everything that's going on in the world, there is a lot that I bet you can think of that is just unfair. So let's get all of those unfairs out of the way right now. So maybe mommy or daddy isn't working right now and we can't get the special treats that we like. That's just not fair. Maybe mommy and daddy are considered essential workers. And if they are, then they're not home for us, maybe to read our nighttime stories or to spend time with us in the morning and go outside and play. Maybe they're just not around as much as we'd like them to be. That's not fair. We're not able to go to school right now and see our friends and learn and see our teachers that we love. That's not fair. Maybe we can't get our special time from our grandparents and our cousins and our aunts and uncles and those very, very special friends that we like to see all the time. And we don't get our special hugs from them and our kisses that we really miss. That's not fair. Maybe we know people who are very sick. That's not fair. Maybe we can't go to the playground or any fun places to play. That's not fair. That's a lot of things that are just unfair. And is there one special thing that you can think of that you think is just really not fair? Spend a little minute to think about that one thing that is really unfair to you. Today, we're going to participate with a Bible story that started with a really unfair situation. It looked like God's people would be completely wiped out. Let's see what happened as we learn that we can trust God when life is unfair. There are some characters in this story I'd like to introduce you to. There is the king, Xerxes. There is Queen Esther. Queen Esther's uncle, Mordecai. And whenever I say Mordecai, I'd like you to fold your hands together and say, a devout Jew. And then there's Haman. Whenever you hear the word Haman, I want you to say, boo, hiss. And then, of course, there's the lead character of every Bible story, and that would be the Lord. And every time I say the Lord, I want you to say, God Almighty. Okay, so I'm going to get a helper with telling this story. It might get a little silly, but it'll help to introduce you to the characters so that you can join in along with your Mordecai, a devout Jew, Haman, boo, hiss, and the Lord. God Almighty. Are you ready? Here we go. A mighty king ruled the land of Persia, and a lovely young Jewish girl, Esther, had recently become his queen. Esther's uncle, Mordecai, a devout Jew, worked at the palace. One day, Mordecai overheard two men plotting to kill the king. He told Queen Esther, 
who told the king, and the plot was stopped. Shortly after that, an evil man named Haman, boo, hiss, became prime minister. He was second in command in the whole kingdom. Haman, boo, hiss, became so powerful, everyone bowed when he walked by. Everyone but Mordecai, a devout Jew. Haman, boo, hiss, hated Mordecai, a devout Jew, because he wouldn't bow down. So Haman, boo, hiss, thought up an evil plan to get rid of him. Haman, boo, hiss, persuaded the king that the Jews were rebellious and dangerous. So the king gave Haman, boo, hiss, permission to issue a royal decree. On a particular day, all the Jews in Persia were to be killed, and whoever killed them could keep all their money and property. How horrible! How unfair! When Mordecai, a devout Jew, heard about this evil plot, he told Queen Esther, You must go plead with the king, or our people will be destroyed, he said. The queen was frightened. She could be killed for entering the royal throne room without permission. So Queen Esther told Mordecai, a devout Jew, gather all the Jews in the city to fast for three days, which was to respect the Jewish custom. Don't eat anything, she said. Three days later, Queen Esther put on her royal robes and entered the throne room. The king welcomed her. She was safe. The Lord, God Almighty, had answered the people's prayers. The queen invited the king and Haman, boo, hiss, to a special banquet that evening. At the banquet, the king asked, what is your request? Tell me and I will grant it. But the queen only smiled and invited the two men to another banquet the next evening. Haman, boo hiss, was proud to be honored at a special banquet given by the queen. And he looked forward to getting rid of Mordecai, a devout Jew the one person who would not bow to him. Why not get rid of that pesky Jew right away, his wife suggested. You can ask permission in the morning to hang him and then go on your way to the queen's banquet. Haman, ooh, hiss, liked that idea and he immediately had a tall gallows built for the hanging of Mordecai, a devout Jew. But the Lord, God Almighty, had different plans. That night, the king couldn't sleep, so he had his servants read to him from the records of the kingdom. They read about the time Mordecai a devout Jew, had saved the king's life, the king. I must honor this man, the king said. The next morning, Haman, boo hiss, arrived to ask permission to hang Mordecai, a devout Jew.
But before he could speak, the king asked him, What should I do to honor a man who truly pleases me? Haman, boo, yes. Well, he thought the honor would be for himself. Oh, sire, I would put royal robes on him and have someone lead him through the streets on your own horses, shouting, This is the way the king honors those who truly please him. Excellent, the king replied. Go find Mordecai, a devout Jew, and do for him just what you have described. Haman, boo, hiss, couldn't believe his ears, but he obeyed and led Mordecai, a devout Jew, through the streets of the city in royal splendor. Then he hurried to the queen's banquet. Tell us why you invited us here, said the king. What is your wish? I will grant it, even if it is half of my kingdom. Queen Esther replied, Please, your majesty, save my life and the lives of my people. There is an evil plot against us. Who would dare harm you? The king demanded. He would! replied Queen Esther, pointing to Haman, boo hiss, who had turned pale with fright. One of the servants came forward and said, Your Majesty, this man has just had a tall gallows built. He was planning to hang Mordecai, a devout Jew. He was planning on hanging him at, on it the very same man who saved your life. Hang Haman, boo hiss, on his own gallows, the king ordered. And so they did. Soon afterward, Mordecai, a devout Jew, became the new prime minister. He got permission to issue a royal decree telling the Jews, to defend themselves on the day they were to be killed. God Almighty, the Lord, didn't let his people down. Instead of being destroyed, they became stronger than ever. Thank you to my helper. So after reading that story, let's think for a minute. How do you think God wants us to respond when unfair things happen to us? I think he wants us to pray and to trust and to act wisely. We can trust God when life is unfair. God cares about us and he will always work things out for the best. There's another story I think we're familiar with that we talk about in Sunday school where life was very unfair. It was very unfair for Jesus. He suffered. He was tortured. And he was an innocent man. He never did anything wrong. He was completely sinless. And he was treated worse than the prisoners. He was beaten so bad and then had to carry his own cross. He was tortured and then hung on his cross to die. I'd say that's very unfair. But God worked that out for us. He loves us so much that he worked out Jesus' suffering and Jesus' death to take away our sins for us. Do you remember talking about salvation the last time we met at Sunday school? Do you remember what salvation means? It means if we believe in Jesus, and we trust him, we have that special gift from God. Salvation is a gift that we know that Jesus 
when in his suffering and in his dying in the cross, he took our sins from us so that one day we will be with him in heaven. So after today's lesson, I hope that you can see that we can trust God when things seem unfair or when we're facing a scary situation, just like Mordecai and Esther and just like Jesus did. That in the end, God has everything all worked out for his purpose and that we just have to trust him. So now I'd like to close in prayer. So if you would please fold your hands and bow your head and listen and pray with me. Dear God, we're sorry for complaining when things aren't fair. We are thankful that you care about us and that you are working things out in ways we do not understand when we think things are unfair. Help us to trust you better, that you, God, are working things out for the best. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me for the Sunday School class. So until I see you again, I want you to know that your Sunday School teachers and all of us at Newtown Reformed Church love you very much and we miss you. And hopefully we'll see you again very soon in the church building again. Stay healthy and love God, and love your parents, and love your families, and know that we all love you.